to the Flow XC show presented by A6. I'm Gordon here with Kevin. We are just a few days away from the big dance, the big race, the big, what do they call it? The big show. The big show. Madison, Wisconsin, where we're going to be live on Flow Attack for the Division One NCAA Cross Country Championships. Very exciting. Time flew by, Gordon. Yes, flew by. And we have new rankings because it's not a race without rankings before the race. That's and true. so we are going to tell you the updated slash final rankings before the actual they race to d discover. Because what is the actual final ranking? Is it this week or is it after they run and then there's the placing of their finish? That's not a ranking. At that's that point, that's a placing. So this is the last week of where ranking. you actually have rankings. So if you want to claim that you exceeded expectations at nationals, or you underperformed, you base them off this week. You can't be like, well, back in September, I was ranked. Winner. No, no. Right now, this these is the, are the ones that matter. Most truest rankings are here. We have a top 255 ranking, so you can check out on FlowTrack where we rank the individuals of the entire 255 field. Uh, we have top 25 individuals. And we also have the top 25 teams, which we're going to run through right now. No monitor, but you can just listen to it. And we'll start on the women's side. And Columbia comes in at 25, Georgia Tech 24, Furman 23, Ole Miss 22, Portland 21 and Indiana 20. All those teams through the nationals. All those, uh, obviously, if you're ranked in top 25, you're on the nationals. Most of those teams kind of stay in that range, uh, in that under 20 range. So no surprise there. Uh, I think the big first big surprise is at number 19 at Florida State. They were unranked. Mm -hmm. Now they're 19th after taking that victory over Florida at the South Regional. Uh, and then we have Notre Dame 18, Florida 17, Iowa State 16, North Carolina State 15. Any thoughts on those teams? North, uh, Notre Dame, fourth at Great Lakes, but, but gets through. That was a very Big Ten-dominated region, Notre Dame being the rare exception. Not, not too surprised there. Florida was fine. I mean, they have a really, really strong number one in Jessica Pasco. Iowa State just keeps rolling. Callie Logan is yeah. really good. That's two weeks in a row, or two meets in a row, where, where she's beaten Sharon Lachetti first at Big 12s. Now at Midwest. And she beat Aub Aubrey Roberts, Northwestern. Exactly. At, so she's uh, on a roll. She's, she's on, on a roll. roll right now. Yeah, exactly. Coming in at 15, we have NC State. 14, Wisconsin. 13 is Princeton. Washington, 12. Michigan State, 11. And Penn State, 10. Princeton at 13. Big jump there. Not ranked. Not ranked. They get second in the Mid-Atlantic region. They beat a good team in Penn State, a team we ranked 10th in the nation. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they beat the 10th ranked team is why they moved up so high. Uh, they didn't run their star senior, Gabri Gabby Forrest, but I have a feeling like she's not going to run the rest of the year because she's not in the entries for NCAAs. But even without her, they have strong freshman performances. I think Princeton is that crazy team we weren't talking about all season long and now come in as a top 15 ranked team before nationals. Yeah, congrats to the Tigers. Washington's interesting. They basically stay put, but there were some nervous moments. I remember before West on Friday when we were in the cold out show, you were wondering, hey, Washington, like they need to do yes. pretty well. And they got fourth in the West, and that was enough to, to move them forward. Did Lily Burton race for I think she did, Washington? but she hasn't been running like a top 20 individual performer, Lily Burton. So Washington is going to hope that she keeps on getting more fit, more mm -hmm. healthy before Madison. Uh, but let's go into the top 10. Obviously, said Penn State is 10th. Stanford is 9. BYU is 8. Michigan is 7. What are your thoughts on those? Well, Michigan dr drops one, but really, I mean, you could keep them in that same spot. They're in that, I think they're in that tier of, like, podium contenders, but not in that big group of five. Um, they ran really solid at Great Lakes. They got the win again over Michigan State. Uh, BYU's been impressive. Like, yeah. sort of chugging along, running really solid every week. Erica Burke Jarvis is a junior, so, th and they're, so they're going to return some of their I mean, for next year as well. Stanford's 1-2 is rock solid with Cranny and O'Keefe. From three to six, they're really young. So yeah. there's been some different runners that have filled in that slot. Um, and then, as you mentioned before, Penn State jumping, you know, four, they've third in the Mid-Atlantic, but moved them up to, to number 10. Yeah, that's just purely because of, you know, they had a bad Mid-Atlantic performance, but they still have that quality talent up front to be a top 10 team if they put it all together on that right day. Mm -hmm. Now this is the top six. I personally think cutoff is six. I think both the men's and women's sides, if you're ranked top six, you're – one of those teams, I'm willing to bet that if you're ranking in the top six, you're going to win a national title. One of those teams is going to win a national title. Okay. I don't think outside, I don't think we'll have like an Oregon when, when they were ranked like 13th or 12th. Yeah, that was weird. That's <laughs> not going to happen. So number six, you kind of don't like, it's kind of low. Boise State, number five, Villanova, 
number four, Arkansas. What are your thoughts on those three teams being the bottom three of the six? Well, I think Villanova is a strong team and very deserving. Rachel McArthur had the race of her collegiate career to, to win that region. And then when you talk about Carolina Corda, Nicole Hutchinson, uh, Taryn O'Neill, like that's a very strong team. I think they rightfully crashed that top five. Boise, you know, they, they were second at West, but I think they were cruising. Ali O, if anything, looks better this week than she yes. did at Mountain West. Uh, when, you, when you put in that pack there with – uh, Venters and O'Brien, Paholik, Fuller, like to me, they're, they're rock solid. So I guess a lot of this, if you're saying that six could win, that means basically these six are interchangeable. Yeah. I wouldn't have moved them just based on anything that happened just because it's so hard to read the tea leaves in a regional race. You just don't really know how hard um, anybody's going. But Villanova, I think, definitely improved their stock like more than anybody else yes. at regionals. I think it wasn't Bo- – we didn't drop Boise State because of Boise State's falters. We just rose of Villanova because of – they've just been so strong, kind of been underlooked this entire mm-hmm. year. Uh, but Rachel MacArthur winning the regionals, like another stick that they have because they got yeah. Carolina Corta, Nicole Hutchinson. They had two great freshmen, and then Rachel MacArthur. It's a strong five. Yeah. Our number three team is going to be Colorado, number two, Oregon, and number one, New Mexico, the defending champs. So we uh, move Arkansas down to four. They were second. We move Oregon from one to two. We bump New Mexico back up to the number one spot where they started the year. It's full circle. They're back to defending champions. They're back to preseason, from preseason rank number one to final ranking number one. What are your thoughts on New Mexico, Oregon, Colorado as the order? Well, first, real quick on Arkansas, because I didn't get to say, I mean, they scored, what, 22 points? Yes. I mean, they won through four. They're in a weak region, but they, they look just as strong as ever, so you can mix and match there. Colorado looked like they were taking it super easy at region, which might be to their advantage. Like, uh, every team kind of cruises, but they cruise, I think, even more. Yes. Danny Jones and McKenna Morley looked fine, um, so, so they, they move up there. Oregon, Jessica Hull looked pretty strong. Susan Ajore is putting together, like, a crazy good season quietly. I mean, she wasn't – she had an off day at pre and went all the way into the 60s. But other than that, like, she's rock solid. Like, if she can continue this one more meet, Oregon, obviously, a title contender. New Mexico, interesting. I guess you and I diverge on how confident we are in New Mexico's number five. I know. I'm a little more confident. And the reason why I'm more confident is because New Mexico has three number fives. And they just need one of them to show up. Well, true, yes. You know, then the, actually, I think they have four number fives. I think Alonzo Negron, who was a number five last year, Emily Martin, who actually finished right next to Alonzo Negron last year for Creighton, mm-hmm. is also a number five for them. Then you have Sophie Eckel, who's been sometimes a number five. She won that B race. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, the, Hannah Nuttall, who hasn't really been having that good of a season. Yeah. Uh, but I think when you have four chances to find one, you know, you're allowed to fail three times. Sure. So they have three outs. Mm-hmm. which I think is good. You know, so that's why I think uh, New Mexico is the number one is because they have three outs at the number five, where Oregon, you know, they only have one out. So if their number five doesn't show up, they don't got, their number six isn't going to be like, hey, I'm going to be your number five. Well, I mean, the back end of Oregon is pretty st- strong, though, still. I mean, when you have Brower as your sixth, she's somebody who was in the 20s last year. Yeah. Well, I, I don't mean, think that- Brower will be their sixth. I think she'll be their four. Well, I mean, but she, she has, she's been moving in True. that spot. Same thing with Philippa Bowden, whose 10,000-meter PR is really, really cool. Well, maybe they don't, they don't have a, like, their seventh isn't up there with their top five. Sure, sure, sure. But, but the top end, I mean, no one's disputing New Mexico's first three is going to be solid. I mean, yes. I, no, one, no one disputes that. I think the question is going to be, four and five and if you look at the key athletes for each team obviously new mexico it's on their five oregon's probably not their five it's more like where does their two finish right well where yeah yeah because oregon do they, they got like two to three that are good that could all finish like fifth to 15th but they could also have good days and finish 15th to 25th yeah and that's 10 points times three sure that's 30 points so that means new mexico's fifth can be 30 places worse than mm-hmm. oregon's fifth and i think that's whereas New Mexico's top three are not going to finish 10th, 11th, 12th. They're going to finish 1, 2, 9th. You know, yeah, so. well, I, I think, I think I mean, everybody's capable of a bad day, right? And yes, we, we've seen that in the sure. NCAA championships before. And with these teams being this close, I think you have a lot of teams who, if their good day corresponds with other teams' bad days, they're champions and vice versa. So way more uncertainty than I thought. When we did this first show way back in September – we basically thought it was going to be a New Mexico yes. waltz to the to the to the title again. It is way more Six competitive teams. than we thought. Yeah. New Mexico, Colorado, Oregon, Villanova, Arkansas, and Boise State. One of them is going to be champion. Yeah, they, they all have a shot for sure. Um, Moving over to the men's side. Let's do it. Uh, let's do it. Uh, top 25, 20 Michigan, 21 Purdue, 22 Florida State, 23 Iona, 24 Bradley, 25 Princeton. A lot of previously unranked teams there in the, in the 2025, mainly because we weren't thinking they were going to make the meet, like yeah. the Bradleys, Florida States, and Michigans. But 
you're in uh 2025 we'll keep going down the list though uh 15 is arkansas 16 oklahoma state 17 eastern kentucky 18 air force 19 nc state uh and now let's go into the 10 to 15 15 14 is notre dame 13 colorado state oregon 12th <laughs> Oregon 12th, Syracuse 11th, and Colorado 10th. I think with the fact that Oregon is still the 12th ranked team, despite not only making the meet by one point, right, right. shows that the way they pick the teams isn't really the best way because the fact that the 12th place team had to get in by one point. Dramatic. Yeah. And that's what I was saying. Weren't they Team 31? Yeah, they were They were 31. Team 31 in, but they're the 12th best team in the nation. Right, right. And right next to Syracuse, who had an easy you know, go of it, in the Northeast just goes to show you that, you know, the disparities in the region yes. and, and strategically how do you decide to pick up um, your wins. Shout out to Bradley, though, first time in the NCAA meet. Shout out. In school history. Impressive out of the Midwest. Just moving into the top 10. We have at number 10, Colorado. Always a top 10 type program there. Colorado, they, they're they good, but they just, you know, Joe Klecker, uh, John Dressel, those, those guys can finish in the top 15. And then... You know, Edward Herrera is, is strong. Ethan Gonzalez is strong, but their fifth is no – I don't know. I feel like if they had, like, one or two more pieces, they would become a podium team. Mm-hmm. But because they're just – they're like a B-minus team when it comes to ta- – like, they could overachieve and get fifth. Sure. Yeah, that's what I think, Colorado. So, uh, Colorado 10th, Ole Miss 9th after winning the South Region. Boise State 8th, Washington 7th. What are your thoughts on those three teams? Washington's interesting. Three different number ones the last three weeks with Tanner Anderson, Talon Hull, and Thibodeau Proctor. I don't know if Andy Powell likes that. Like, if he'd rather have like a solid number one, or if he thinks it's kind of interesting and, and it shows the strength of the team that anybody's capable of taking it. Boise State packed up really well in that very, very tactical West race. Like their group was in there, and you know they got third in the West with Yusuke Uchikoshi, who's been their number one before. I think he was their sixth guy. He like didn't even didn't even score for him. And Old Miss, I mean, w- wins the South. I'm, I'm interested to see how they do in the, you know, in the big show. Yes. They, they, have, they have some runners on that Ole Miss team who, with really strong competition, I think could overperform our projections. All right, now our top six. I think, again, like the women's side, these six teams, I think, are the, the, podium, are the title contending teams. Six, Iowa State, team we were high on, kind of hasn't been putting together much of a – as a strong performance we thought they would have this season. Uh, Festival got, got hurt at Big 12, so he didn't run. But Edwin Kerr got still a true number one there for – Iowa State. Wisconsin comes in at fifth. Again, they got great one-two punch in Hoare and McDonald. And then Stanford at number four. What are your thoughts on Stanford, Wisconsin, Iowa State? I mean, Stanford and Wisconsin, were pr- they ran pretty similar races in regions, and they just completely jogged. And they had star runners who jogged. Yes. And they had star runners who jogged with their teammates. I mean, Grant Fisher and the Stanford crew did not seem at all worried about what, like, was it like 17th yes. or something like that. Wisconsin was a, lit, a bit uh, farther up. It was, you know, Hacker, uh, McDonald, and Hoare. I think the fact Hacker, we know he's healthy and recovered from the sickness he had. That's big for Wisconsin. It's just a matter of four and five. I mean, they're almost mirror images of each other, Stanford and Wisconsin. Yeah. You know, the, 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 top, the top gun and then a little bit uh, shakier at four and five. But that's everybody at this point. I mean, when you compare them to the teams at the very, very top, you know, that's the difference. They have a really yeah. solid four and five, and these guys don't. Iowa State, I'm just interested to see. Uh, I mean, they won Midwest. They won Big 12s. But and they have a guy in Kurgot who can win the entire thing. But that gap from one to two. Yeah, uh, it's pretty large. So, it's but like Andrew Jordan was top twenty last year. Sure, sure. We so haven't the, seen it. That we haven't yet seen it yet. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that is five, six, seven. Now uh, four, five, six, seven. So number three, we're going with Portland, and then BYU two and NAU one. Uh, so the fact, basically, NAU and BYU are going to be one, two the entire year. Uh, but Portland, <laughs> they've been going up and down between. We preseason ranked them third. They've been going all the way down to six. They were fifth last week. Now they're third. I think we know what NAU's bringing to the table. They're yeah. great. They got strong one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten punch. <laughs> BYU also is a very strong team. Uh, I think Portland is that team we just don't know. You were out. You watched uh, the West Region. Yeah. What were your thoughts on what Portland did? The fact that they debuted Logan Logan Orndorff, mm-hmm. uh, first time racing. Michael Somers, a Belgian transfer race. He was a number three man. Uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on this team? I mean, I'm always a big fan of the November debut. I feel like a November debut in cross country shows ultimate strength. I mean, they looked, I mean, they looked good, and they look like they're peaking at the right time. You know, Caleb Webb in that race fell down. That's why he was a little bit farther back. He got caught up with somebody. If Lavise can run like he ran last year, I mean, he's he's one where you're 
kind of similar to, to Andrew Jordan, where, okay, if they do what they did last year, they're going to be fine. The, almost, it's kind of weird to say, but almost the key to me is, like, Nick Hagar, because if he's, like, legit, like, top 10, top 7 type runner, I, just, I feel like there's some, some magnetism with the Portland yeah. team where they just kind of pull ev- – like, everybody's on, like, a string. But if he's, you know, somewhere in the, in the high teens or into the 20s, then obviously it's, it's going to be tough enough yeah. to crack BYU or NAU. Uh, but they certainly look like they're running, you know, better now than they have. I just – I'm wondering what the lineup's going to be this time in Madison. We might see another debut. I mean, I can know. see – I mean, Hager is running well. Like, between NAU, BYU, and Portland, you could see Hager being the fastest finisher of those three teams. Yeah. They could Because be, I think Hager could beat Baxter and Day on a, an, on a you know – Three times, three times out of ten, I think Hager could win against Baxter and Day. In a, yeah. in a, it's cross country, uh, and I think Hager obviously can beat anyone at BYU. He did it at the West Coast Conference. Yeah. So, the fact that like Portland has like a stick that can compete with the BYUs and NAUs, right, shows that I think I mean, Portland got second last year. They were preseason ranked. I mean, they were ranked third or fourth going into that meet. I really do think Portland. It's not. I don't think we're going. I think is a good chance Portland could break up NAU BYU. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I have that kind of separation after the, the top two. Um, but Portland, I mean, there's just so many questions around them. You just don't know because you have guys debuting in November. They have, they have another guy that they haven't raced yet. Okay. So Also, another note on Nagar. I like the pointing to the, the finished card. Oh, yeah, finishing. that was great. Strong move, power move by him to, to win the West. So NAU 1, BYU 2, Portland 3, Stanford 4, Wisconsin 5, Iowa State 6. Check out all the rankings on Flow Track. We have top 255 individuals. You ready for Madison? I am ready for Madison. Also, if you guys like shows on Facebook slash Twitter, tomorrow D2, D3 show with Lincoln Shrike. Oh, uh, yeah. D3s are coming up on Saturday as well. Johns Hopkins women dominating. North Central men dominating. But as always with Lincoln, he finds the story beneath the story which you should check out uh but this has been fun yeah i'm excited to get to to madison i'm excited to actually have the results come to life yes people run the race and we're going to be live at 8 45 on saturday morning with abby formerly diagostino now cooper and uh mo ahmed two hour live pre-show on the course it's going to be epic it's gonna be cold too it's gonna be cold and epic 8 45 we'll see you then